Welcome to this week's episode of Fuel. I'm Ian Gordon along with Dennis Pitzabarger and Nick Miles. Nick, what's on this week's show? A packed show for you this week. Two vehicles, Volvo's XC90 along with the minivan from Honda, the Odyssey. Then we'll be in the pits with our friend Ty from Baxter Auto Parts. And it all starts right now. Welcome to this week's Fuel Show. Still to come, we have our second behind the wheel, which is going to be the Honda Odyssey minivan. We have our new segment, and then Dennis is going to visit with Ty from Baxter Auto Parts and get a little bit of a history lesson on how Baxter began. But it's time to turn to our very first behind the wheel. We're taking a look at Volvo's XC90. Volvo is a company of great safety history. In the 1920s, they got safety glass in all of their vehicles, and then that became laminated glass in the 1940s. In the 50s, it was a three-point seatbelt, which was really the grandfather to the modern seatbelt today. And then in the 1990s, they put in individual side impact airbags for every seat row in a vehicle. Well, of course, Volvo always synonymous with safety. Dennis and Ian are going to take a first look at the 2007 Volvo XC90. The first category for the Volvo XC90 3.2 is Q-Factor, and it's the gadget or tech score it's got that roll control system, which is a really cool feature in an SUV. Yeah, now I would have to say this. Raise your hand if you think you can roll it. Yeah, I think we both assume that we can. Now, according to Volvo, you actually cannot roll this car unless you disable the system and go out and do something absolutely crazy. That is something that makes Volvo buyers keep coming back year after year, model after model. It's also got SIPs, Side Impact Protection System. Now what this does is protect the occupants from a side impact in case something actually penetrated into the area, or commonly known as the T-bone. It's also got Bliss. It's a blind spot information system which uses small cameras mounted on the mirrors to register cars in the vehicle's blind spot. Now the only Achilles heel to this car is the cost point and no heated seats. I don't understand it but we'll get to that later in the segment. My Focus SVT has heated seats. Yeah. It might have something to do with the score only being 3.75. Curb Appeal is the next category for the XC90 3.2. And the thing is, is the XC90 when it first came out was really an aggressive stance for Volvo. I mean, all of the new Volvo styles go back and against the grain of everything that they've produced for decades. I mean, you remember Volvo's refrigerator box, bread box, square, the computer, and then you cut out holes for the wheels. I mean, they just didn't have a lot of style to them. All of these were such a push forward for Volvo, but in today's market, with SUVs looking so aggressive and so modern, it's almost looking dated. It is, uh, but I think it's still higher than average just because of kind of the classy feel that it has. 3.75 for curb appeal. Performance is up next for the XC90 3.2, and power is provided by a 3.2 liter inline six. 235 horsepower and 236 pounds-feet of torque. Now, the problem with this vehicle is the power is adequate, but it's just not awe-inspiring. It does its job. Well, I, the I'm vehicle's so heavy. I mean, I think that, what, what's the difference? In the V8, I think you lose two gallons or two miles per gallon. I don't think that's a huge raise for going that much of an engine size up. No, and it does have 311 horsepower in the V8. The thing about the six cylinder is, I don't know if people are gonna buy it depending on price. If you're just looking for the XC90 and you want the standard power and you're not really worried about going fast or, or passing. Well, I think you're being a little, a little biased. It's just kind of, it feels sluggish. Though zero to 60 times around eight and a half seconds, that's not bad by 1970 standards, but in today's SUV market, there's so much more that is, I guess, exhilarating, something that kind of makes you feel Well, people feel expect right. an SUV to, you know what I mean? They kind of want some oomph in it, and this vehicle, like I said, it's adequate, but there's just nothing there. Yeah, we're going to have to give it a three for performance. If it did have the V8, a four. Fin Finish is the next category for the Volvo XC90 3.2, and its interior is ergonomic, it's comfortable, it's, it's user-friendly. I like the way that the material choices have been made. I love the use of aluminum and the use of alternative materials. It is put together well. They last forever. I, I know that one of the most high mileage vehicles on the planet is a Volvo P1800 with over a million miles yeah. on the factory car. Irv Gordon, 1.2 million miles. Well, I don't know if you get 1.2 million miles out of this XC90, but how are we going to score it? Uh, it's great. It's a Volvo. It's built beautifully. Four for fit and finish. 
Drivability is the final category for the Volvo XC90 3.2, and it combines uh, kind of a blend of comfort and handling, I think, in an SUV. Well, it does take a lot of little things that make an SUV great and blends it into what I think is a luxurious package. It does need to take a lesson from, say, the X5. It needs a little more sport in its sport SUV. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a little bit more aggressive, and I, I think that buyers would tend to go to the V8 model if they really, really needed it. Now, the thing about Volvos is it's it's a buyer's car, and what I mean by that is it's something that if you're in the family, so to speak, for Volvo, it's your next vehicle after the wagon and after the sedan. 3.75 on drivability for the Volvo XC90 3.2. Let's see how Dennis Nian scored the 2007 Volvo XC90. In Q Factor, the gadget score, they gave it a 3.75. In Curb Appeal, how the vehicle looks overall, it got another 3.75. In Performance, two points off perfect at a 3. In Fit and Finish, it jumped up a point and got a 4.0. Finally, its overall usefulness in drivability, a 3.75. The total for the 2007 Volvo XC90 was 18.25 out of a possible 25. Still to come on fuel, our second behind the wheel, it's the Honda Odyssey minivan. And we'll be in the pits with Ty from Baxter Auto Parts, taking a look at the history of that company. And when fuel returns, we'll have all the news you need.